Welcome into College Corner today, my best bets, three of them for the national championship game between the UConn Huskies and San Diego State Aztecs. Guys, if you've been watching the show, been helping you make some money, be sure to drop a like. We didn't even have 50 likes, I don't think, on the last video, and we went with another perfect 3-0 day in college hoops. That is three straight videos of three straight winners, 9-0 in our last three videos here. So be sure to, to show some love, drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed, comment down below your thoughts on this big, big game, national championship game, very excited to cover it with a couple of player props. Do have a side for you. Do have a side. We're feeling really good because if you watch the YouTube video where we predict, predicted our national, potential national champion, San Diego State was in there at plus 8,000. I also on Twitter shared uh, a while back and earlier in the season, UConn at plus 3,000. So either way, I'm making some money here, which I'm very excited for. But I mean, we got a big game here. We got to play some wagers, play some bets. If you guys haven't already, go sign up at DraftKings. You sign up, you bet just five dollars. That five dollar money line bet wins one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets. So I'll include that link down below in the description. But without further ado, let's get into the plays. We'll get started here with our side, and then we'll get into the props after I tell you how I see this game being played out. So our side for this game. I'm on San Diego State, plus seven and a half. I dipped in at eight plus eight over at Bet Rivers at like minus 114. So be sure to shop when you're watching the video. Some books are starting to bring this down to seven, but man, UConn is getting an overwhelming amount of money. I can't blame that from happening. Honestly, San Diego State, the, the win there was a gift. We got the cover with FAU, but man, they really pissed that game away. Should have had that one, especially giving up some of those offensive boards late um, and really not running enough clock late in the, in the game too in that final possession for them. Unbelievable, unbelievable finish there. But why do I like the Aztecs? Well, every single tur tournament game they've had, they've played a team that's a high-volume three-point shooting team. Uh, we've got another one here in UConn, but FAU, FAU finally put something together from beyond the perimeter against the Aztecs last night uh, when they shot... 9 of 22, 41% from three. I think this is a bit of, real, of a reality check for their defense, quite frankly, because you know, you've know you seen them so dominant against the three. And I think some teams, honestly, were struggling on open looks against this team as well. So I think they kind of felt like they just took the floor, show up, and they'll defend the three really well. Reality check comes in. I think they bounce back in a big way here defensively against the three. This UConn team taking 42% of their shots from three. That is 64th in the country. So very high volume here of threes between, you know, Tristan Newton, Jordan Hawkins. Um, who else am I forgetting here uh, in Jackson? And then any, a, a lean off the bench. So there's plenty of three-point options here. We know how good this San Diego State defense is. Despite the struggles against FAU, opponents are still shooting a 28% from three. That is third in the country. Uh, so love their three-point defense. What I also like is the job they can do limiting opponent-assisted buckets because we see from UConn early in that game, that's why Newton cleared his assists. He was already at five by halftime because he is does such a great job getting their guys easy buckets, easy scores from distributing um, at the top of the key. And I think this SDSU defense will do a good job limiting that. They are 72nd in the country in assisted uh opponent assist rate, assist per field goal made. That's a 46% compared to UConn, which is absurd. They are what, uh, eighth in the country in assist per field goal made at 63%. I think we were showing it on the broadcast that they had, I think, assisted on 10 of their first 13 field goals. There's something crazy like that. I think San Diego State will do a much better job in terms of eliminating those easy buckets right off of those passes. So I love that there. And then the other one, a few extra possessions, which could be huge in a game with such a low total. UConn does struggle with turnovers. They're 236 in the country in turnover rate. Uh, San Diego State top 100 in steal rate. So getting some extra possessions there would be huge. They do a good job on the glass. Should be able to limit some of those second chance points on the glass for UConn, who's a great offensive rebounding team with Sonogo. They've been a great defensive rebounding team. On the other side, the offense is where it's a little bit tougher to find those advantages for San Diego State in this matchup. UConn's a tremendous defense. They're eighth in opponent effective field goal percentage. Defend the field really, really well. One thing I'm looking to, though, and we'll get into it in my player prop as well, uh, San Diego State's ability to get to the free throw line. 20% 20, 20 of their points come to the free throw line. UConn has struggled all season keeping teams off the free throw line. They're 313th in the country. That's like bottom 50 of like 363 teams we have here in opponent free throw rate. So look for that to be a potential advantage on the offensive side, but love what they can do on the defensive side to keep this game close. I'm not sure they win this game, but I think they can cover. All right, time to get into our player props. Like I said, I got two for you, starting with an over. We're looking at Jaden Ledee, over seven and a half points. And again, guys, we've been crushing, crushing the player props. 19 and nine in the tournament between 
between here and on my Twitter. Um, so I, I, I can't do this stuff. I can't get all this information to you and be able to win at the rate we've been winning without the help of props.cash. You guys are going to see all the info from them here. Uh, Ladi has gone over this number in seven of his last 10 games. Lovely to see that there. And as well, as we look into his uh, his volume and opportunity here, in his last five games, he's averaging eight field goal attempts a game, more than what this number is listed at. And then as well, if you go even closer here and look at his last three, nine, nine, and then he had 12 last night against Florida Atlantic. This is a guy that's getting some pretty decent volume at this really really low total on his points prop. And he's scoring 100% of his points in the interior. That's something we want to look at here. He's not really taken much of any threes this season. And despite averaging just 19 minutes per game, he does lead the team in free throw attempts per game. So you love to see that. He's averaging three and a half, three point free throw attempts per game in his last 10. Again, that's first on the team, 73.1% free throw shooter. So pretty efficient at the line, which is great. And we touched on that UConn trouble defensively in being able to keep teams off off the line. So Ladi's going to have a, you know, a matchup here with probably either Sonogo if he's playing the center role or one of these other forwards, um, potentially, you know, Alex Caravan as well. But uh, I do like what we can do here in terms of him being able to attack the rim, get to the free throw line and get his points in those easier ways here and be the big part, I think, of this offense. The other thing I want to keep in mind as well for, for a lot of people is those minutes I mentioned that aren't really that high. He's only playing about 20 minutes, less than 20 minutes a game. But with the matchup with Sonogo, who's that dominant force offensively for the Huskies, you could see Ladi on the floor a little bit more because of his size. He's six foot nine. Him and Nathan Mensa, who's 6'10", are definitely going to be playing a big role in slowing down Sonogo on the defensive end, and hopefully that'll keep him on the floor a little bit more on the offensive end, and I like what he can do in terms of he's the best guy with a matchup here. It's either Ladie to me, or potentially uh, Matt Bradley is the other guy getting the line a good amount, but a guy like when I'm building um, some same-game parlays, a guy like Lamont Butler could be someone I go to as an under as he's not one that attacks the free throw line very much. So again, something to keep in mind, but I really like Ladie here under, or sorry, over seven and a half points. All right, last one. This is why these are my best bets, my three best bets. I have to be able to give you guys what I feel are my favorite plays, and that doesn't always mean I'm giving you an over. So in this spot here, I'm going with Jordan Hawkins under, under 14 and a half points. So love this spot here. Uh, if you look at the data here from props.cash, he's gone under in four of his last six games. So that is good to see there. We know with this number uh, at listed at 14 and a half, it is one that he is has been going under. That's the big thing I look at with props.cash is looking at that previous data. To tell me, is this prop something that he's been able to hit for me previously? Is it a realistic number? It of course is here with Hawkins. It was 15 and a half against Miami, down to 14 and a half here. Obviously went under in that game against Miami as well. But um, in terms of his outlook here, he's taking 12.1 field goal attempts per game. So one of the more, more high volume shooters just behind Sonogo leads the team in three point attempts per game. He's taking 8.2 three point attempts per game. That's significant here because that's almost 70% of his shots coming from three. And we mentioned here this San Diego State three point defense um, that is so, so good. He's typically a 38.6% shooter from three. But again, that matchup, matchup with San Diego State's three point defense, opponents shooting 28%. I think we're likely to see that uh, efficiency come down quite a bit here. And big one here that I think is going to really have you guys wanting to, to get to the book race to bet this, which is listed. I think I, the best number I found was like minus 102 to the under is the fact this is a low total, 132 points. That's the second lowest total they've had in the tournament. The only one that was lower was 125 and a half against St. Mary's. And what's great to see here is in that matchup with that similarly low total, Hawkins went under his points. He had just 12 and he had 12 points all shooting from three. He was four of five from three. He shot 80% from three in that game. I don't think he does that in this game against San Diego State's defense. So I really like his under 14 and a half points for that reason. Elite defense, lower total, and we have the previous history in this total lower total that he was going under despite efficient three-point shooting. So love what we have here. Got to take this under. You know, guys, I know a lot of you, you know, if you see something that you think will tend to go under, you just won't bet it. This one's going to make you money. Lock in this under on Jordan Hawkins, 14 and a half points. All right, recapping here, the last day of college basketball, the last game, Monsanto State plus the seven and a half. 
Jade Ledee over seven and a half points and Jordan Hawkins under 14 and a half points. Guys, if you want to have access to all this data from props.cash, all you got to do is go to the link down below, sign up and use promo code OwnersBox. You're going to get 25% off your first month. They've got college hoops, which of course is ending today. So you might not be able to get the benefit of it, but if you want to start betting on the NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball, they got so much data for you at Major League Baseball. So go check them out. We love props.cash. Definitely been a huge part of our success here in player props. But guys, hope you enjoy a fantastic national championship game. Thank you guys so much for tuning in all throughout the tournament. We'll be back. You know, it's going to be a long hiatus. So if you guys are looking for more betting advice, uh, whether it be the NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball, we're live on Twitch every single day. 12 o'clock on our Twitch, Owners Box Sports. I'll include that link as well down below. But in terms of College Corner, we'll be back for the college football season in August. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one.